<laughs> How you doing, folks? We are coming at you from the Open Door Food Pantry at 20 Emerson Ave in Gloucester for another edition of Now We're Here. I am Corey Cooper, along with my co-host, Heather Atwood. I am sitting in today. Yes, I'm very excited. I am very excited to be here today. Yeah, this is great. So we have an awesome show planned for you today uh, with a bunch of great guests and also, uh, fittingly, for the holiday season and Thanksgiving, we figured what better place to be than the food pantry here, our local food pantry, and talk about all the amazing programs they have going on. Uh, the who, the what, the when, the where, the why's, all that. And they have 9,000 things going on right now, including today. You'll hear the bustle in the background as you're preparing Thanksgiving meals. So? This is what I like to say about the food pantry, the open door. Yeah. The open door is our community's food pantry. And as I am a food writer, I like to say that this is really the only food story. This is the best food story and the only food story. Well, what sure. they're doing here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Right. So. Without further ado, yeah, are we ready for guest number one? I think so. Julie LaFontaine. Hi. Yes, Hi. The executive director of The Open Door. Julie, good to see you Hi, again. Hi, it's good to be here. Oh my God, thanks for having us. Oh, Thank you for having us. Awesome. Yes, this wow. is great. <laughs> Wait, so are we setting off the fire alarms or what? Yeah, I know. That's really? Like something's going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, there's a lot happening back there, yeah. Julie. Do you just want to tell us really quickly what the noise is back there? Sure. So um, in addition to giving out food through the food pantry, as we do year round, uh, we're preparing for all of the Thanksgiving food baskets that will be distributed out to people in the community who need a little help putting uh, food on the table for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And uh, so the dining room is a, a great big assembly line with pallets and pallets of food. Um, Many people in the community, and thank you so much to this community, have donated money to be sure that there are turkeys and potatoes and carrots and onions and stuffing, all of the fixings to make a fine Thanksgiving feast for folks who want to eat at home with their own families, recipes, traditions, making memories. Right. And so what goes into preparing these meals? Yeah, so um, you, you're calling them meals. They're actually foodstuffs so that folks can cook at Prepare, home. right. They get yes. to cook themselves. Um, and yeah. so uh, really what it takes is uh, you just finely tune logistics, and we have a great team uh, with our food acquisition team, warehouse team, uh, getting everything together. And then we have uh, about 100 volunteers coming in over the, today and tomorrow to help get those baskets put together and then distributed out. So there's a turkey, there's protein, there's vegetables, there's all the stuff you would want to make a Thanksgiving meal, yeah, it's pretty, right? It's pretty traditional. Yeah. And so, you know, you, you've got the, the potatoes, onions, and carrots, and squash. Uh, can't forget the cranberry sauce, um, uh, biscuit or corn uh, corn muffin mix, and mm -hmm. um, and then all you have to do is you know add your own family recipes um, and and make some memories uh, for your family. Nice, that's so important. So I think a lot of people, including me, don't know the origin story of the Open Door. Do you want to tell us oh. where this all came from? Yeah, well, it all started back. Uh, <laughs> right. um, so actually, um, the story of the Open Door is uh, the story of community. After the blizzard of 1978, it was recognized that when people went weeks without electricity and food, that there was no emergency source of food on Cape Ann. And so uh, it was actually the outreach committee of the Rockport Congregational Church that identified this need. And Shout um, out to Rockport. Shout out to yeah. Rockport. Uh, shout out to Cape Ann, yeah. strong. Right. And, um, and they approached the Interfaith Council to say, you know, what can we do about this? And they partnered with Action for the very first Cape Ann Food Bank. That's uh -huh. what it was called in 1978. And uh, as I understand it, I wasn't here then, um, it was a cage of food in the basement of Brown's Mall. And if you needed food, you would call up and you'd say, hi, I need some food. And someone would go down and they would pack you, pack you a box and bring it up. Um, that first year, 49 households were served. And I think organizers hope to be out of business in just a few years. Um, but that is not what happened. Yeah. Um, last year, the Open Door served uh, 3,500 households, representing just under 8,000 people. That's amazing. That's amazing, Two million right? pounds of food. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it's a significant amount of food um, growing up out of the heart of a community to take care of neighbors in need. So, Julie, how did, did you end up getting involved with the Open Door? Well, you know, I kind of think that, um, you know, uh, the mission is, is compelling. Um, the mission is just to make sure that we're alleviating the impact of hunger. Um, and the, the first and most immediate impact of hunger is, I'm hungry, right? Um, but prolonged periods of not having the right amount of food um, can have an impact on your ability to, to grow and learn and work and, and stay healthy. It's really and, important. Yeah. And so I just was, I, wherever I've been in my life, I've been kind of drawn to this notion 
um, this very simple act of let's just make sure that hungry people aren't hungry. Mm -hmm. And um, so my husband and I moved to the area in 1998, so 21 years ago. Where'd you come from? I came from southern New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had always, like I said, always been involved and drawn to these things, volunteering, uh, you know, preparing meals for the local soup kitchen or organizing the kids in our youth group to do a food drive. And so one of my first stops after I moved here was to say, who is feeding people? And um, I, I, it led me uh, to the door of the open door, and uh, I started volunteering. And there were so many ways to be involved. And uh, after several years, there was an opportunity uh, for an executive director position, and I applied for it and uh, was lucky enough to be chosen. Yeah. So. And they've been lucky enough to have you, it's too. So this community is so lucky to have you. You have just become such a stalwart pillar of this community and connecting all the charitable organizations. And yeah. it's great. Well, you know, that's very kind of you to say. But I think that, um, you know, it's really true that this organization has grown up out of the heart of a community that cares for its own. And so my job has been easy. It's the people in the community that really make it happen. So what have been some of the sweeping changes you've seen like in 21 years or so, just the development of the open door yeah. become as big as it is now? You know, uh, so we've really taken a, a look at the way that we're connecting people to good food. You know, kind of gone are the days of canned corn and peanut butter only or day old donuts. Mm. Um, but really taking a look at what does it take uh, to provide someone with uh, the nutrition that they need to be healthy. And um, and so, you know, as we started looking at our numbers, we actually serve one in six Gloucester residents. And wow. uh, with that comes some responsibility to be sure that there is that, that variety uh, of food available mm -hmm. for folks. So some of the biggest changes that we've seen is, you know, we, we um, fairly early on went to wholesale purchasing milk and eggs when we didn't have it donated from some other source wholesale purchasing produce when we didn't have it donated from another source, huh. you know, just to make sure that, you know, th that there are just really good nutrient dense foods available. Was that really challenging for uh, in the in this field of food pantries? Was it hard to find? wholesale milk and eggs? Uh, you know, um, I, I think that it, it was a mind shift to think about, um, yes, you know, we're, we're a charitable organization, but we're really a charitable business. And if our business is feeding people, then we have to use the same supply chains and look to find the resources that we need and, and keep ourselves um, delivering on our mission, but also do it um, minding the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So. Now, how large is the staff now and how many volunteers do you have? Any so, uh, you know, the volunteers are the lifeblood of the organization yeah. and we have more than 1,000 volunteers oh that God. give their time wow. over the course of a year. Right. Uh, about 20, over 27,000 volunteer hours last year. Well, I remember even with just the empty bowl dinner alone. Yes. How many, it's like all hands on deck. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the great thing uh, about the mission of the Open Door is that the community really shows up for that. They roll up their sleeves as something that they can, you know, really get their arms around and, and help make a difference. Why do you think it's been so embraced by the community here? Do you think it would be different in another area or what is it about Gloucester, Cape Ann, you know, Cape Ann And Plus. Ipswich. They have satellites yeah, in Cape Ipswich. Ann Plus I mean, you're serving Ipswich, really yeah. the North Shore. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think, uh, Corey, it's a great question. It's just, you know, at, at our most basic needs, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy, our most basic needs are making sure that we have food and shelter. And I think everyone can relate to what would it be like if I didn't have that? Mm. Um, and so it makes it easy to say, hey, I'm going to, um, you know, donate some food at a food drive or I'm going to donate some money to, you know, to help support this infrastructure that's connecting people to good food. And and I just it's not complicated. It's 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 basic. It's easy to do. And uh, it's a quick way to, to feel good uh, um, when you're when you're giving thanks uh, for your own blessings. And you think, too, of the local ethnicities and how That's cooking and thinking. food is such a central part of uh, social life and not just the basics. Yeah, you know? There's a fundamental understanding yeah. that feeding people and eating together is such a the first problem we have to solve, maybe, right, in, right. Uh, in this community. Yeah. And fishing, right? You're fishing to feed, too. Yeah. And that's right. a big part. Yeah. I don't know. When right. all ties in together, it works beautifully. It's, and there's it also make the sense. piece of it being an island. Well, you know, that yeah. it's a tighter community maybe yeah. that way too. Yeah. I don't know. 
Um, so I would like to ask you, before we go to Jen Perry, who's going to talk to us about programming, to talk about partnerships, because there are a bunch of charitable organizations on Cape Ann, and you all work together. Yes. So if you could sort of describe how you work together, because I think that's important for people to understand. Okay, yeah. So um, you're absolutely right, Heather. There is a strong social network here in Gloucester. Um, I think uh, we have really kind of realized that, that, that social issues are larger than any one of us can solve and together we're stronger and that starts you know right from the top with a mayor who makes sure that we're all talking and working together um, she really brings us to the table around issues uh, she really believes that we take care of our own and um, and she extends that beyond Gloucester to, to Cape Ann and mm -hmm. beyond um, really you know with that funda fundamental belief and she's and a cook and she's a cook, <laughs> right, yes. Um, and, you know, I, I think that, you know, um, one of the things about food is that you can never assume that people don't know what to do with food, but you can't assume that they do know what to do with food. And And so we learned early on as we started introducing some nutrition education into our programs or sharing our recipes and best practices that we might put an idea out on the table to say, this is what you do with falafel or this is what you do with kale. But the real richness came in the client saying, this is what my grandmother taught me to do with kale, or this is what my you know, my family does with falafel. And in that exchange, you start to address kind of that, um, you know, sometimes there can be just a feeling of, of, of shame to ask for help, or, or you might um, uh, you take some... It, it feels stigmatizing to say I'm using the food pantry, mm. but when there's an exchange of recipes and ideas, it's kind of this great equalizer, and food is an equalizer. Food is an equalizer, yeah. it really is. Beautiful yeah. said, yeah. yeah. Well, should we introduce Jen Perry and talk about programming in more detail? I think that sounds yeah. great. And we're going to be right. bringing Julie back later on okay. to talk yeah. about more immediate things happening at the food pantry, not just Thanksgiving, but we also have Stuff and we're stuffing a cruiser in my market basket. Did yeah. you know that, Heather? All, all kinds of things yeah. going on. Stuffing a, a cruiser? Yes. Yeah. Did you say stuffing a cruiser? Yeah. All right, let's get back to that. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. So <laughs> thank, thank you, Julie. We'll see you in a few minutes. That was awesome. You have Julie LaFontaine, the executive director here at The Open Door. You're watching Now We're Here. I'm Corey Cooper, along with Heather Atwood, filling in admirably for Maureen Aylward, I must say. I am, yes. And it's, I'm a little bit nervous to fill her chair, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And as we bring in Jen, we just want to tell you that we have opened a new studio down at 11 Pleasant Street in Gloucester. We're actually in the middle of that move right now, but we can't wait to share that space with you in the upcoming Come visit. Weeks and it's months. very swanky. Lots yeah. of glass. It's like Manhattan and, yeah. <laughs> and, and on Main Street. And yeah, you can crazy. see the city hall right there, right? It's a yeah. shadow of the city hall right, right down there. The Lots of great neighbors. And actually, we're going to be bringing, I think, like a pared down version of Now We're Here. We're going to do a little morning daily show, we think. Um, so we can have like scaled down versions of this and just sort of join you every single morning from So what's, what is happening every single day on Cape Ann? I think it's, yeah, which Kinda means cool. I have to be at work on time now. <laughs> <laughs> so let me rethink that a little bit. But. Okay, <laughs> want to introduce Jen? Hi, Jen. Hey. Yeah. So this is Jen Perry, you. the uh, program, Director of Operations, Director of operations here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So thanks for yeah. joining us. Thank you. So can you give us basically an overview, and I know it's extensive, of what the open door programs are because there right. are many, right? Yes, um, and we do have a number of traditional food security programs that people think of when they think of a hunger relief organization, but we like to do things in non-traditional and innovative ways, as I'm sure you both know. Um, um, and starting with like the really the basic framework around all of our programs and services, we used a, a trauma-informed care lens. And what that means is we're acknowledging that our clients come through the door with um, massive amounts of trauma and that we recognize their needs for dignity and empowerment and respect. And so it all starts there. And as Julie was talking about, there's an exchange. You know, we really don't, we, we try and mitigate that power imbalance between a service provider and a client. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our food pantries and uh, we have a food pantry in Gloucester, one in Ipswich, and both are client directed, which means shoppers are actually pushing a carriage around the store, which looks just like a small supermarket. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're recognizing the brands that we offer. They see familiar categories like produce and dairy and meat. So it's a very familiar experience for them. Um, we also go out into the community with fresh produce through our mobile market program, yes. um, which is a fantastic program. So we go to senior centers, we go to schools, um, uh, we go out to public housing neighborhoods. We even have um, a location outside of our service area at North Shore Community College. And we partner with Beverly Bootstraps to offer a monthly market. 
Um, Can you just stop there? Yeah. So is it, are those scheduled stops so people anticipate? Absolutely, that, yeah. That's great. And then we also do have pop-up markets too. So we were just at the Gloucester Integrated Preschool for a pop-up market a few weeks ago. Um, so it, it can be a one-time thing too. Um, and then we have our meals programs. And I think the best known is probably community meals. We serve dinner five nights a week. Um, the dinner's provided by uh, many generous groups from the community. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of churches will a lot come of, in yes, and, and cover Tuesday night, right? Super yeah. supportive. And then yeah. one night a week, it's just for families. And so we do a kid-friendly meal with some activities. Uh, and then we have uh, our summer meals program, yes. so which is so critical. So for the 10 weeks that school is out, um, children still need access to a meal on Cape Ann when they're used to getting it. You school know, lunch. free or school, yeah. price. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner across sites in the community. Um, and then we're down at the Rose Baker Senior Center four times a week with soup and a salad bar. So those so are, you, those you are, are the highlights. Yeah, yeah. So you're covering students at yes. the North Shore Community Health College. Yep. Elders, ch families, and children. Yes. That's, it's really, you're covering everybody. Well, hunger affects people differently. Yeah. You know, and so you want to target each population specifically. I would love for you to go back to the, um, that that program that you talked about, the trauma program. Could yeah, you just yeah. talk about what it means to be hungry yeah. and what are some of the real effects on people right. when they're suffering? There's no one profile of a hungry person. So we know with um, seniors, they're often in um, a situation where they can't afford either their medications or their food. And so they're either cutting back on their medications to afford groceries or they're not eating enough so that they can afford their meds, but in either case, one's gonna have an impact on the other. And so there are real health consequences. Um, and certainly for adults, adults will go hung, parents will go hungry before their children. Um, so in a household with food insecurity, the children may have a very different experience than the, the parent who's going to work hungry and not having a lunch with them. But they're, they're sparing their children from that. Right, and then I, and to get on about um, dealing with children, yeah. and students out of school, how do you help meet their nutritional needs in their right. formative years? Well, we always encourage participation in the school lunch program and breakfast. Those are very nutritious meals. Um, and so we try and be a resource for the school food service department to help um, enroll children in that in that program. Mm -hmm. And we also go into the schools with mobile markets so that families can shop together and take produce home at the end of the school day. Um, we have a great new program at O'Malley called Dish where we're working with teenage girls around healthy eating. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we get we get really creative when we're working with, with students and, and children. Very cool. So is that a challenge sort of responding? How are you figuring out how to respond to the yeah. community? Well certainly we we um, we look for opportunities all the time. And so um, whether that's someone coming to us and saying, hey, we've noticed this trend, what what can we do about it? Or, you know, we might hear of a great program across the country that we think is a best practice that we wanna bring back here. Um, and so we're always mindful of what's happening and what's affecting people. Um, and it could be, you know, inclement weather and a power outage, or it could be a government shutdown, you know, but there's always something happening that, you know, we can, we can come to the table with. Um, with food and, and help as that resource. Right. I know that you really value families and nutrition yeah. here, and I just feel like that is um, that's so much a heart of your programming, right? Absolutely. And, and yeah. is it a challenge? We talked to Julie a little bit about this, but finding good food. Yeah. How hard is that to do? Actually, it's not that hard to find good food. Um, we've sort of tackled the access issue. We have so many distribution points now. What's hard is consumption, and it's it's getting people to take and consume those healthy foods. That's where we get really creative. That's where we involve other departments and programs here. Um, we have, um, in our food pantry, we use something called nudges, which is a marketing strategy uh, where we might promote healthy foods by placing them at eye level so that you know people see them first or using really attractive signage. But your practice is at home. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, if you can't see it, you're not gonna eat yeah, it. Yeah. Um, uh, or we'll take foods people are less familiar with and the kitchen will work their magic and transform them into something delicious that mm. clients will actually get to try, take home, and take the recipe with them. Um, we have a nutrition education program that's very robust. We provide workshops, cooking demos, and one-on-one -on -one nutrition counseling with a registered dietitian, and we go everywhere with that. Um, and it's it's great. It allows us to reach uh, people where they are. Yeah, 
And I know through the mobile market, you were doing little tastes, right? Yeah, of things yeah. you were coming up with creative ways to use different yeah. vegetables. And I think you were really in charge of that for a while, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Designing um, some of those recipes. And it was so much fun, yeah. you know? And um, again, these are recipes that I would then take home and be like, oh, I'm going to make this too. Yeah. This yeah. is great. You no, know, I took note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so a as an example, um, one time we got a lot of turnips in. And I mean, who really... You, <laughs> no one. <laughs> They're really right. tricky. Yeah. 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 So exactly. And so our kitchen made a this this hybrid potato turnip salad, right? And it was delicious. Shaved, dry? No. No, no, no. It was cooked. Been. It was yeah. cooked. Yeah. Um but you know, it had a little bit of mayo and it had I think some scallions and you know, these delicious ingredients. And people loved it. And then they're taking home the turnip and the recipe and Excellent. You know, making yeah. it at home. You can get yeah. turnip from a turnip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, so anything else we should know about the programming or viewers? Well, one thing I did want to mention is, um, you know, we were we were talking about, um, you know, access. And a lot of our food comes, all of our food comes from the community. And so we're out on the road with an aggressive food rescue program. We're working with the Greater Boston Food Bank, farms, supermarkets, retailers everywhere. Um, and and that brings in a lot of the healthy foods, the fresh foods. Um, but tomorrow we're expecting to take in about 35,000 pounds of canned and dry items Yay. across five yeah. supermarkets. It's a huge day. Yeah. yeah. So when shoppers are out tomorrow, um, there's five different locations. And uh, when they're shopping, we encourage them to grab one extra item for us, one or two. And uh, there'll be volunteers there to take it when they leave the store. Do you want to mention the location? Yeah. So, so it's um, the Market Basket in uh, in Gloucester and Gloucester Rowley. Crossing, yeah. And then um, there's the Shaw's in... Uh, Ipswich and also on Eastern Ave and Stop and Shop in Gloucester. Great. Very nice. Yeah. And those canned goods are still really important to Absolutely. the program, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, they're, they're another staple. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. educating us all on this. Thanks. It was great seeing you both. And thanks great. for doing the good thanks work. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Thanks. That was awesome. Yeah. So next okay. we have... Jen, Jen, I go back a long time. You and Jen? Yeah. Oh. Jen actually is the first person I ever met who had the uh, like a standing working station, like the treadmill station. It's the first time I ever saw oh, like, at the gym? Oh, I need one of these. <laughs> I just walked by her in the hallway. I was like, oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. But. Well, we go back, but not as far as you, maybe. Really? I don't know, Jen. What do you think? Oh, it's, it's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Whenever I see both of you, there's a camera on me. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, people like the duck. Yeah, we get used That's really to it. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Heather. All right, we have an, an, our next guest yes. is Sarah Grow. This is Open Door Hello. Palooza today. I know. Hey. Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. We also go back a long ways, too. We do. Oh, yeah. Our yes. kids went to preschool together. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. So but we met at Fun Among Us. Oh, yeah. I forgot about, about that. Fun Among, fun us. Fun among us. us. Right. right. Now we have food among us. We do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely said, yeah. Sarah. Well, thanks for doing this, Sarah. Oh, no. No, no worries. We know it's crazy here right now. It but is. A good well, kind you of know crazy. what? It's crazy oh. here year round. Yeah. This is just like another level. Yeah. yeah. So, Sarah is the Director of Advocacy and Development yep. here at the Open Door. Yep. So, would you? start by telling us what it means to be an advocate for the open door right well um there's many forms of advocates you could be somebody that is in the community that um cares about food insecurity and uh, uh are, are good spokespersons for the open door but we look at advocacy in terms of um local state and federal policy and uh, policies that impact low-income people so we are working at the local level we're looking working at the state level and we're also working at the federal level it's been a busy year for, for advocacy on many, many different fronts. Um, in locally, we've been working on, uh, on rather statewide, we've been working on Breakfast Before the Bell. You heard from, from Jen about how important Breakfast Before the Bell is. Um, breakfast Before the Bell is making sure that students get their breakfast after the bell instead of before the bell. Um, only 10% of students who are actually eligible for free breakfast get it if it's offered before the bell, and mm. so research has shown that if it's offered after the bell during school, then they're more likely to get it, maybe 80 to 90%. So we've been supporting that legislation that just passed, I think it was th Wednesday or Thursday. Now this oh, is a federal that. program. Yeah, but, so that's a federal yeah, program. Yeah, so this but is not your program, but no, you're advocating no, for it. No, we're yeah. advocating for it. It is, fun. It is um, a federal program, but it's managed within the state. It has to go through our state legislature, so we were really, um, many many advocates were working together to promote that mm -hmm. uh, and what it means is that uh, schools that have high levels of uh, students with free um, reduced price lunch so in, in our service area that would be um, veteran school and beeman school where they have more than 60 percent of students who are free or reduced means that they now will be able to get breakfast after the school bell that's great yeah that's that great, great. Yeah. so uh, maybe you could tell us 
briefly, how um, what has changed over the years in terms of your clients? What what have you seen in terms of need? Like how um, more more children, more seniors. How has need evolved on Cape Ann? Um, I think um, that we're. I think need has always been there. Is whether or not we're you know we're more able. I think to identify that need. I mean, as you heard from from both Jen and Julie, you know, we serve seniors, um, children, families. Um, a lot of our advocacy revolves around SNAP, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamp. Yeah. Um, yeah. And totally uh, a separate program. The th it's the federal again, program. That's the federal program. Yeah. It is funded by the um, by the federal government and it's managed by the state. Um, and I think it's thirty nine million dollars. It's program? it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of money. Billions of dollars. Billions. That's what I meant yeah. to say. Yeah, thirty nine <laughs> yeah. million. Exactly. I think Massachusetts right. alone is is a billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So right. Yes, it is. So what happens when there are changes in? the SNAP program? What happens to right. the open door? So How the, are you the wonderful thing, well, the wonderful thing about the open door is that we, we, we do not rely on every, any government, very little government funding, between two and three percent. But many of our clients are dependent upon those food stamps. So when SNAP is cut or there are rule changes, what that means is people have less money to spend on food. And when they have less money to spend on food, then they're coming to the open door. Um, and so um, there's a couple of things statewide we've been working on some um, we've been supporting advocates with some legislation to reduce what they call the snap gap which means um, if you're eligible for mass health um, many people who are more than half the people who are on mass health are actually eligible for food stamps but don't receive it so we're working with the state legislature to try and get that gap closed mm -hmm. there's more than 7500 people in the open door service area who are actually eligible for snap but don't receive it. Oh, wow. So mm. we're advocates are working together to sort of to close that gap. But federally, what's more worrying right now is that the um, the federal government is looking to change SNAP rules, rules that have been in place for more than 20 to 40 years, which will have a huge impact on the open door in the sense that it will mean more people will come. They're looking at changing, um, and I don't wanna to get too wonky here in, mm. term, in terms of policies, but they're talking about three and a half million people being cut off SNAP within the next 90 to 100 days. Wow. Which, nationally? Or nationally, which means 90,000 people in Massachusetts, which means also a million children getting cut from school meals, free school meals. And that's just one rule change. That's amazing. Another rule change that they're looking to implement um, is, uh, is to do with the SNAP math. Again, I don't need to get into the details, but it means that um, more than 45% of Massachusetts households will have their SNAP cut from $30 to $100. So you can see that sometimes right, those federal- From federal, $30 to $100? No, between $30 and $100 oh. will be cut from okay, their monthly okay. SNAP allowance, mm. which means they'll have $30 to $100 less money to spend on food. And so you can see that if that federal policy goes into effect, what it means is local people will have less money to spend on food. And if they have less money to spend on food, chances are they'll be coming to the open door. Right. So right. yes, yeah, so it's a busy time of year. We're busy year round, uh, but we're also anticipating more need within the next 90 to 100 days if these rules go into effect. Mm -hmm. So you have to really be on top of all yeah, of these absolutely. programs, yeah, to yeah. know how to yeah. plan and how to anticipate right. what's but, going on. But, but not alone. We are part of a very strong coalition that work together, advocates the, um, the SNAP coalition out of Boston, um, and, and hunger advocates around the state and also nationally. You know, we are not an island. We work together. Um, there's strength in numbers um, so that mm -hmm. we can really advocate for low-income people. So there are people down there in Washington who are Absolutely. yeah working with this yep. right now. Yep. Mm. Well, what else should we know about um, sort of any programs that are impacting the open door that or the work you're doing here at a national level? Um, I think National some, programs. Well, I think all, all of the programs that we, if there's a certain demographic that our programs are serving, we're also looking na you know, statewide and nationally. So you heard about the, um, the mobile markets in, our, in, our, in the North Shore Community College. Mm -hmm. We're also working with um, a coalition right now to strengthen um, uh, food security on school campuses. Nationally, I think it's like 48% of community college students struggle with hunger. In fact, locally here at North Shore Community College, um, they did a, a study in 2016 and they found 
that more than 53% of students are struggling with hunger, which is why we partner with the Greater Boston Food Bank and Beverly Bootstraps to put in a mobile market. So we're always looking for ways that we can, you know, um, support our programs here on the ground with policies at the state and federal level. Mm -hmm. And if people want to become part of that support group here locally, yep. how can they do that? Can they yeah. go? Can they contact the open door? Absolutely. We're always looking for people to, um, you know, to speak on behalf of our programs if they're clients and mm -hmm. they wanted to share their story. I would say, come reach out to us. You know, we're always looking for advocates in the community to, you know, write a letter to a legislature or call a legislature when we have um, when we have a need to do that. That's so, important to know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. That's great. Well, we want to bring Julie back to talk okay. about the greater uh, yes. giving ideas. So, yeah. so Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah Grell. You can tell from the accent. I think she grew up in the fourth section of the <laughs> <laughs> The other accent. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're just tuning in, you're watching. Now we're here live at the Open Door special Thanksgiving episode that we're doing now but along with Heather Atwood here. Thanks for joining us today, Heather. It's so nice to be here. This is great. At we're the learning open door. a ton. Yeah. Yeah, we are. And a lot going on. So we want to bring Julie LaFontaine back to sort of talk about uh, specifically what's happening. Yeah, what's happening and let our viewers know how they can support the open door right now through okay. the holiday season, yeah. but also throughout the year because the issues don't stop after the holiday season, right? But, you know, that you bring up a good point, Heather. I think that there's a lot of focus around the holidays on um, making sure that, you know, people aren't going without. Um, but the truth is, after the holiday dust settles, um, people are using the food pantry year round. So uh, to respond to what's going on right now, um, tomorrow, uh, as Jen mentioned, we're having our annual Thanksgiving food drive, um, and we'll be at five different grocery store locations. Um, and here in Gloucester, were lucky enough uh, to be stuffing a cruiser with yeah. the Gloucester Police Department. Yeah, so, so what Joanna is this Castro about? was just over here, yeah, yeah helping out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, to, what that is is they, they'll actually be there, and people are literally going to stuff that cruiser full of food at Market Basket. At Market mm -hmm. Basket in Gloucester. And then once that cruiser is full, we'll just put it on the truck and um, and continue to collect food. Cool. We'll be there from nine to three. Uh, again, the locations are Market Basket in Gloucester and Rowley. Uh, uh, Shaw's on Eastern Avenue, Shaw's in Ipswich, where the Ipswich Police Department will be stuffing a cruiser for the third year. In oh, a nice. Row. Oh, and, um, and then also a stop and shop. So we have those five locations, but wait, wait, there's more. Um, so the Thanksgiving food drive actually encompasses many collection sites. So we have lots of businesses. Um, Beauport Hospitality Group mm -hmm. is doing a food drive collection site. Uh, Bank Gloucester is. Uh, all, a lot of businesses, all of the schools. I'm going to get in trouble if I start naming I some. Know, it's some it's, it's um, a lot. But it's an extensive Faith list. I think is. there are over 50 different locations collecting as part of the Thanksgiving food drive. And um, to be clear, we're really not looking for stuffing or cranberry at these drives. Um, we, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got that taken care of um, through the generosity of the community and have, have the bags that are getting put together right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we are looking for those uh, shelf-stable items that can go on our warehouse shelving like what you see behind you and uh, be distributed out in January, February, March when people are, are thinking less about food pantries. Right. So. So how can people help during the year? So uh, we are always looking for volunteers, and there are many ways and hours uh, available to get plugged into a volunteer opportunity. Um, it, it can be physically doing something. It can be being an advocate, as Sarah mentioned, writing or calling um, one of our, our um, legislators. Um, uh, or, you know, you also um, could uh, help out and be involved by maybe you're saying, gosh, I just I really don't have time time but I want to make sure that I'm helping uh, we have something called the good egg club and uh, the good egg club uh, as the name suggests is, is is signing up to be a good egg it's a it's a dozen donations like a dozen eggs uh, of the same amount on a monthly basis so it's a one-time sign up you can huh. go to foodpantry.org and uh, sign up make your donation and then you can do ten dollars a month and then you've given a hundred and twenty dollars for the year and at ten dollars a month that feels less painful than than writing the check for, for a one-time donation. Right. Right. So you can choose any amount, um, and that helps uh, make sure that we're connecting people to uh, the access point, um, but also helps support uh, all the work around nutrition, education, and uh, uh, consumption as well. So. Right. And we know it's on the forefront of everyone's minds to help out, you know, especially like put the foot on the, on the gas this time of year, but right. 
it's a year-round service and people need help year-round too, especially after the holidays pass. So we just want to reiterate, if people want to help, there's more than a thousand volunteers are at the open door working around the entire calendar year. So right, right. Uh, if they want to get in touch, foodpantry.org, or of course, come on down to 20 and Emerson Ave. That's right? right, yes. And learn more about all the great things that the Open Door is doing for the community. Yeah, it's a great community here at the Open Door. It really just, everyone, you, you, it feels, you feel the spirit of it. You feel oh, the, good. yeah, the- um, It's an intersection. We like to yes. call it an intersection for community. You got people coming in from, from all different corners, but it's a place to come in and in a world that feels frankly quite divided sometimes, mm -hmm. it's a common language. It's something we can all agree on and it's a good place to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for all you're doing Great. and thank you for hosting us today. Yes, thank you so much, Julie. This <laughs> thank is you. awesome. Yeah. We love being here. We can come back again, can we? You yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, right now, put it on your calendar yeah. for next year, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, Pencil that in, absolutely. So, Julie Alfontaine, the Executive Director of the Open Door Food Pantry. If you want to learn more about the food pantry, foodpantry.org. And in the meantime, go out tomorrow and do your shopping at the Market Basket here in Gloucester. Oh, boy. <laughs> or Ipswich. Or, I mean, or Raleigh. Raleigh. Yeah. You've got Shaw's, the Shaw's on Eastern Gloucester. Ave. And, and stop and shop switch. here too. Shaws and then Ipswich, have the Shaws and Ipswich. Oh, you guys get right? it. Gold star. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yikes. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Thank I you. I think we may see you again because yeah. we have a special guest at the very end of the show. And Excellent. you may join him. Julie, right? so you'll be our first three time guest here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All very in good. the same show. Oh, good. I'll wear that honor proudly. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, too. Right. So that's why we wanted to mention the bustle happening is actually preparing to deliver um, baskets to more than a thousand local families, I believe. I know. For Thanksgiving. 1,200, I think. Amazing. There are forklifts back there. Yeah. There are people packing things. It's very exciting. All right, our next guest, very cool. I'm so happy that he's here to join us is Brendan Schipperini. Hello. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks you for too. doing this. Can I say Anytime. hello, brother, too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Brennan, you are working with the Sea Cadets here in Gloucester, right? This is the David Ouellette division of the Sea Cadets. It is. So, for those people who don't know what the Sea Cadets are all about, can you just kind of give me the A to Z? So, the Sea Cadets are sponsored by the Navy. Our division is sponsored by the David G. Ouellette Foundation, who was a Medal of Honor recipient of the um, Vietnam War, mm -hmm. where he saved uh, his crew on a riverboat. So that's who we're named after. They provide us funds and able for us to do our events. You can be 10 years old, just start off as a lead cadet. When you turn 13 to nine months, you transition to the sea cadets, which you can stay until you graduate to high school. Uh -huh. And we do a lot of charity work. We do drills. Um, one of the main things that sets our division out from all the other ones, we have our cadets fly helicopters and fly airplanes. The instructor will take them up. I think like 30 kids just signed oh, yeah. up, right? <laughs> yeah, the instructor will take them up, say, you yeah. got the stick, and they'll let them drive around and fly the, the plane or helicopter for a good 10, 15 minutes. Right. Now, are you a veteran? I am. I served in the Army as military police. And do you fly? I do not. Okay. I haven't been up in one yet. I let, I let them go up and do it. <laughs> I'll save it for last because gas money for aviation fuel is expensive, and we don't want to charge them more. And we're lucky that with the funds we get from the David Gillette Foundation, we can provide, and we do a fundraiser for the VFW. So that allows us to kick back the money to our division to keep the cost down for the cadets. Nice. Yeah. Do you have any good stories about a cadet who came through your program? We just recently graduated our senior cadet. He was our lead and petty officer. And he was in the program for a good like four or five years. And he ended up getting a full scholarship to Norwich University. Oh, I lived up there at Northfield, Vermont. Yeah. Because yeah. of his training of with us, he's been succeeding it's well a up great there. School. He's a front rider for the cadets. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. What's his name again, David? His name is... Um, Petty Officer Lynch. Thank you. That's great. So I understand the Sea Cadets have a Thanksgiving uh, effort. We do. Um, I've been, been an instructor for almost two years now. And ever since I joined on, we Mark Nestor at the Legion mm -hmm. has been inviting the cadets to help out with their meal prep during Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we'll bring our cadets there. After the meals are prepped and ready to go, they'll call the driver's name. And usually the drivers are elderly or they might have more than one box that they can't carry it down. And we'll have our cadets carry the box down to them, bring it to their car, or just stand by so they can pull their car up front. And it gets our cadets involved out in the community. Yeah. And so let's back up and talk about that American Legion effort, because mm -hmm. I think that's connected to the open door, right? Yes. Can you just describe what they're doing there for Thanksgiving? The American Legion, well, like I said, the, the volunteers, they're putting together a Thanksgiving meal. Anyone that doesn't have a meal, they called it in. 
they'll prep the meal, deliver it to them. Anyone at all in the community. Anyone at all. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And a big thing last year, I remember Nesta telling us that there was a lady out in like California. Yeah, Oregon. Oh, Oregon. Told, yeah, yeah, this is Oregon, an amazing story. That needed a meal and she called American Legion here in Gloucester. She called the American Legion in Gloucester. Yeah. And oh. when she gave him the address, he's like, oh, we're in Salem. And he's like, the Salem address didn't ring a bell. She was from Salem, Oregon. So he couldn't do it. So right it was an there. accident that she yes. called here. Yes. Yeah. Oh my god. So what Mark Nest ended up doing was contacting the Legion out there and got her a meal for Christmas. Uh, how cool is that's that? That's great. That's really cool. Yeah. That and so how many meals are you expecting to deliver next Thursday? I believe it's over 500 easily. I mean, wow. With all the help from the volunteers, last year we knocked it out in 30, 45 minutes. Just the assembly lines and the efficiency, how they got it going. It's just one oiled machine. Now I understand the open door provides the actual food, right? I believe so. Mark would have more of that information. We're more there for the muscle and the carrying it out. Yeah, I want to confirm with Julie. That's right, Julie, right? That So we do provide some of the food that is served that day. Yes. Yeah, okay. And then, so they cook the meal at the American Legion? They cook and so it's a there. cooked yep. meal that is delivered to anyone who does not have a Thanksgiving meal, right? That's correct. Yeah. And after great. the deliveries, they they flip the tables. They'll welcome anyone that wants to have a sit down meal. Right. They invite them to that actual Legion where they can sit down and hang out. So they're serving a meal they serve there it after, on yes. Thanksgiving Day? Yes. That's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, and of course, people will learn about this program here, but where else uh, are they getting this information? Someone who's alone out there and would... For well, the, well, the meals? Yeah. It's all over social media. I mean, okay. right by ear. Facebook. There's a Facebook, Facebook. page. Facebook. Okay. Uh, they're very good at putting it out. I know Adam Kukru, the veterans office, he's always pushing it out on his website. It's been in the Times, too. You can see mm -hmm. the spots in there as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And I wanted to bring on um, Brendan and just talk about the Seeker Desk because I don't think people realize in the community how much those kids are actually doing. It's I know they're very involved uh, in the Pride Stride. Mm -hmm. Um they, I think uh, there have been flag ceremonies at the Elks I've seen the cadets at. Whenever there's vending events in and around Cape Ann, they're the guys helping the vendors unload and load and move around. It's those kids. It's a yeah. special group of people. They do That's a lot great. at the uh, Gloucester Harvest Festival down yeah. on Rod right. Street to help set up all the vendors, moving tables. Uh, wow. We got a flag day retirement ceremony at the BFW this Saturday. We're going to provide a color guard and retire the flags. Oh, okay. We also did, uh, we got them all in the Fish Box Derby. Yeah, that's a picking big up this um, big hay bales, and they were helping pushing the cars back up the hill. Any girls in this program? We had one, but she, she had a, other commitments with soccer. It was kind of conflicted, right. so she had to leave. But we are open the girls and females, and mm -hmm. we we encourage them to come. Yeah, because it makes our group be that more diverse. Right, and we all help each other. Right. What's an easy way to find you, Brennan? Would it be online or? If you can easily Google Gloucester Sea Cadets or David G. Alette Division. Yeah. And we also have the national website, um, www.seacadets.homeport.org. You get okay. all that and you'll find your division or where it relates to you because there's multiple ones about the state and you find the closest one that you can go to. Perfect. And lastly, I just want to ask, um, why did you get involved in um, service in serving the country? Serving the country? Yeah. What I, led you to that? But growing up, in the 80s, I always watched Rambo and Commando. And <laughs> my uncle was in Good the military. Answer. My great uncle was in the military the army. So yeah. it kind of led me down that path. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to college, but I, I didn't want to sit around Gloucester doing nothing. So I enlisted when I was like in sophomore. I already had the papers all filled out in high school. And three days after graduation, I was on the plane for basic training because I didn't want to get in trouble over the summertime, mm -hmm. mess things up. And it worked out good. I mean, I came home. I got working the police officer in Gloucester. I got a Met my wife in the army. And we had kids, and just all That's worked great. out good. My daughter's in ROTC at the okay. University of Michigan, oh, so she's off to the National Guard. Yeah, and with the Secret, there's no obligation to join the military at all. We it's, just help provide discipline, integrity, and install all the military values that will make you a better citizen at a job or at school, even at home. It sounds like a wonderful program. It really does. It and is. so good for this community and good for the kids mm -hmm. to yeah. get them connected well said, to that Brandon. community Absolutely. effort. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We well, appreciate your time and your oh, service. Oh, thank you. And yes. uh, enjoy next Thursday. We know you guys will. And we'll probably be out there helping you in, in one fashion or another. Excellent. And again, just thanks for all, all that you and the cadets are doing in and around town. We thank really you. Appreciate yeah, actually, it. that's a question. Do you need help serving on Thanksgiving Day? Or do you you can set? call the Legion if they need more volunteers, but I'm pretty sure they're always set on drivers. Okay. But they will never turn someone away if you want to come down. Even if you make one plate and go through the assembly line and that's all they need you for, right. they're not going to turn anyone away. It's okay. to get the whole community together. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, cheers to all of you. Yeah. Helping out that day. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank Brendan Chipperini. Thank you, sir.
All right. Thank nice you. to have you. Appreciate too. you spending time with us. See? We're learning a lot today. Are, I am learning so much. Yeah. yeah. Those sea cadets. That's I'm going to start looking for them. Yeah, I've worked with those guys a lot over the years too. So it's been it's been fun. They and they yeah, it's a lot of muscle. Those kids are really good. Well, you put some 15 year old kids together, and that's the muscle I don't have. Yeah, it's a big help. Yeah. I think we just threw um, Lisa Smith for a loop, setting us up for our next guest. But I will tell you who they are. It's um, Peggy Hegarty Steck and uh, Jen Schmorrow from Hi. actioninc.org. Hi, guys. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Hi Jen. Guys. How are you? Thanks for having us. Thanks yeah, for thanks coming. For being we're here. terrified, but we're here. <laughs> you know, we're really fine. Every time, on, we so, every time we do something on camera, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. And I heard you speak at the housing discussion. Oh, the did other, you? Yes, oh, it was great. great. Oh, that was thanks. such Thank a you. wonderful yeah. forum, thanks. and you were really good. Oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. for saying that. So, so right off the top, for those who don't know what action mm -hmm. is, can you please just sort of... To sure. brief the folks. So Action is a local multi-service organization. We've been um, on KPN for 54 years, and uh, we provide a range of programs from housing to benefits assistance, uh, energy assistance, which we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. as well as job training and education and a range of other services that help people meet basic needs. And our biggest purpose is to try to create opportunities that help people thrive and move forward in their lives. So what does that look like, the creating these opportunities? Give us um, an example. So for instance, um, we help people stabilize their housing. Um, we help people when they're in need in the winter with fuel assistance. We help people get their high school equivalency. So for folks that never finished school right. or had some challenges, we help them get back on track, um, get back on track with their education. And then we also have career training. So we help train people in to be certified nurse aides as well as uh, commercial driver's license mm -hmm. training. So we provide a lot of things like that that help people take that next step that they might not have access to that opportunity otherwise. And we provide it locally, which is really important for our community because as you guys know, you know, people, it's a very, um, there's a lot of pride in Gloucester and on Cape Ann in general, and people stay local and want to work locally. So we try to provide those things here so people can continue to stay in this community. And one thing I noticed when Julie LaFontaine was speaking earlier was how some of the numbers of how many of the open door serves will sort of blow your mind. It's mm -hmm. the same with, with action as well. Just talking about the fuel assistance program, mm -hmm. I believe you helped serve more than 3,000 homes on Cape Ann last yes, year. That's yep. correct. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. amazing. And can, so yeah. for people who don't know what the fuel assistance program is, let's go over some yeah. of that. Uh, so the fuel assistance program is an income based program in our area, the great uh, Cape Ann area. And we service uh, Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester by the Sea, Essex, Ipswich and Hamilton Wenham. Mm -hmm. So ours is a little more expanded than some of the action programs on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We're located at 47 Washington Street in the Energy Building. And we provide services uh, if a person is income eligible for our program, they receive a monetary allotment to their heating vendor for the winter season, which is November 1st through April 30th. Um, they also receive discounts on their national grid bill. So their electric bill is 32% off for their rate. And then the natural gas is 25% off. Um, and then it opens up a whole other lovely box of goodies. Mm -hmm. Through our weatherization programs, we do appliance management audits and audits on the uh, weather stripping and, and that's insulation. So important, those two. Yes, if energy efficiency right, is extremely exactly. important with us yeah. and to us. So auditors will come to the home and audit the whole home and provide um, uh, potentially free heating systems for ones that are failing or have issues. Hmm. We do repairs. Uh, weatherization includes your insulation. It's amazing. That yeah. is really yeah. replacement Siding, of yeah anything like yeah. that, and we should mention you don't necessarily need to be a homeowner. No, you right. can be a to renter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you can apply for fuel assistance and be heat included with your rent and still receive these services. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a misconception that you have to pay your own heating bill of where you're at, but that's not generally the case. And it's for uh, uh, all ranges of families. You know, single, elderly people in their home still. Working families, I mean, our income guidelines are up to 60% of the state medium income, which is terrific, but a lot of families don't realize they're actually eligible. They're working families and don't think that right. they deserve or need the programs, but they are definitely eligible. So they can learn about eligibility on your website? or Yeah. Okay. We have right. it here as well. You want to talk but about it? Just for instance, a family of four can make just under $72,000 and be eligible for fuel assistance. That's great, So because that would be tough. In, yeah. in Gloucester, we know that one in three families are potentially eligible. So it's one of those programs similar to SNAP, like Julie was talking about earlier, where people don't think they're eligible, but they are. 
and there are lots of um, caveats in it. So sometimes folks think, oh, well, like like Jen said, oh, if I'm working, I and, and that's not true. So the best thing to do is to call us mm. um, or to go onto the website, which is actioninc.org, to get more information. Um, and we do a lot to reach out to folks, but it's one of those programs that people often think they're not eligible for, but they are. Right. I was going right. to ask, like, how challenging is it for Action to try to make these services available? Let just people know that these are yeah. available to them and, and there's a lot more inclusive than than people believe. Yeah, it, I mean, it is challenging. We reach out in a number of different ways. We've done everything from billboards to train ads to mm. drive-through ads. We do grassroots outreach as well. So we use a lot of different methods to try mm -hmm. to get the word out and let people know this is a great way for us also to let people know um, and that it never hurts to call. So if you have any questions, it's always just best to call and we can help you from us, there. Yeah. yeah. So you're paying a lot of attention to fuel costs, right? So just as Sarah's doing advocacy work with the Open Door, you guys must be really paying attention to what is happening with you know, yeah. fuel at a more national level. Right? Yeah, it, it affects how far the benefit stretches. Um, we've had um, reductions to the federal funding coming down to the state. So for instance, Massachusetts got $11 million less last year. So that was a big gap to fill for the state in terms of helping people. And local leadership, particularly Senator Tarr and Representative Ferrante helped um, to put some supplemental funding into the budget to help us get through the entire state, get through last year's season, but this year it's the same picture. So um, this year the benefit amount is less per month for people or per payment. Uh, and um, so we're gonna face that same challenge when it's a tough winter. Often people are out of their benefit by January. Mm. And then, so they still got two to three very cold months left to get by. We have um, emergency assistance. Uh, we have folks that call at all hours, at all days of the week with problems. Um, and lack of heat, we work closely with um, police and fire around you know people that are at risk. Mm. Um, I think the other thing that we haven't mentioned that's important is oftentimes when people have to pay a fuel bill, they forego other expenses exactly. like medication, or they will use an unsafe heat source, which can also right. be very dangerous. So um, fuel assistance, even though it's directly for fuel, it helps people afford to stay in their home. So if you can reduce your regular costs, it helps you be able to still afford the rent and stay where you are. So it's a st housing stability program. It's a basic needs program, but it also helps people to just, you know, afford those basic needs that everyone has every month. Um, so it serves a lot of purposes and helps a lot of people just locally, 3,000 households, which is a large number. And um, so we always ask folks to just remember that and support that. And in the face of federal cuts, we do do advocacy around how to, to get that those levels back up because we see it every day, um, folks that, that run out of fuel and are in really serious trouble by January. And that's um, not a situation that we want to have. And what was the importance of the November 1st date? Is that when the fuel assistance program kicks, kicks off? In. Kicked yeah, off again? so yeah. that's when we start paying. So people that have deliverable fuels, and then we cover all kinds of fuels. So your deliverables, your propane, your oil, uh, wood, if people have wood, mm. and then your utilities, your gas and electric. So anyone that's getting a delivery, it can't be until November 1st or after. I see. So that's like our opening day is when the benefits kick in. Mm. Okay, so. do you have an idea how the response has been so far? Um, we are pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, the little segment we did outside the energy building yeah. got a lot of attention oh, and a lot of booking. So that was a great kickoff to good. the season. So, And how about the energy efficiency programs? I assume they could go all year round where they you do. invite people into the home and mm -hmm. see. Yes. Check yeah. yeah, so that happens all year. Okay. And that's a rate program. So people just have to be on the discount rate with the utilities. Mm -hmm. So in the summertime, they can even come and we can see if they income qualify for that for energy efficiency stuff. So. Right. And right. the great thing, if they are eligible for fuel, they're automatically eligible for yes. weatherization services. So if they come in through fuel, we immediately track them to weatherization. Because the great thing about the two programs together is you're helping folks afford that heating bill, but you're also helping reduce their heating costs through the weatherization. Exactly. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, um, and it's a great benefit to the property owner. So if you're a property owner and it's a rental property, you know, it's a benefit to you because your property's getting additional improvements to it that keep it weather tight and comfortable and it's good for the tenant because they're also having a lower bill and they're having more comfort in their home because of the insulation and the other things that we do to sort of maintain a steady temperature. 
Right. Right. Well, I'm right. hoping that people watching at home are either tagging friends or family <laughs> yeah. to, you know, just to learn more about this and see yeah. if they're eligible or yeah. know someone who is eligible to mm -hmm. reach out to action. Right. Any direct ways to support you guys? Like, what can the community do for to help you guys out? I think, um, you know, in terms of spreading the word, it's really important. We want to make sure folks that they know that the program exists and that it's there for them. And then when we do have issues at a legislative level, we always push that out too, just to let folks know that, you know, the funding does matter and that um, a number of really core programs that help people get by um, have been cut repeatedly over the past several years. Fuel assistance is one of them. It's also called LIHEAP, L-I-H-E-A-P, uh, low income heating assistance, but we all know it colloquially as fuel assistance, <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's the program. So when um, when the budget goes through and we wow. reach out to let people know that, that they should call their representatives and senators to let them know this is an important program and that we need to maintain that funding. Um, and the primary folks that are receiving fuel assistance in our community tend to be seniors and families with young children. Okay. So they're vulnerable populations mm -hmm. that really need this help. And it also helps them to be safe and stay in their home and maintain their housing, which is really important given the housing crisis right. that we have in the state and locally, you know, maintaining people's housing is incredibly important. And so it helps seniors stay in their homes. It's one mm -hmm. of those many programs that helps seniors stay in their homes. Well, and another facet of action I want to bring up too is Project Uplift yes. is about <laughs> to begin. And in this season of giving, mm -hmm. this is a the annual toy and clothing drive that Correct. you always host. So you want to talk about yeah, that? So bit? applications are already available. People yeah. are already thinking about it. Um, our So the drive we've been doing for over 25 years, I think it's 28 at this point, but we collect um, toys and clothing and donations to buy more toys and clothing um, for uh, children and families uh, in the Cape Ann region. And it's a great effort. We have a lot of business partners and a lot of other local partners that help us put it together. It's a huge initiative and we serve from year to year anywhere between six and 700 children, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, the great thing is every year, over the past several years, we've been able to give every child a book, pajamas and several toys. And again, this is a program that helps families. So every family wants to give their child a nice holiday. And when bill when bills come in and the budget is tight, that's difficult to do. So this is a way to help people through this program to get some things, you know, for their children that make the holidays a little bit easier, reduce the stress, and help them again to pay those other important bills like food and heating and housing. Right. Um, and the the terrific thing is the pop up store will be located this year in the former Pleasant Street Tea Company, which is at 7 Pleasant Street, right next door to our office. Right, right next door right to our store office. Right next door to your office. I know we're going to be neighbors very yeah. soon. Uh, we've seen the construction. It's exciting. Yeah. Um, so we really, again, encourage people to donate. Uh, there are boxes throughout the city and many local businesses. You can find that on actioninc.org. There's a special link for Project Uplift. You can also donate. Uh, check, cash, credit card. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I will say um, with the donations, they tend to cluster around certain age groups. So we always need to buy toys every year, despite many efforts to collect. There's always a need for us to buy toys for certain age groups, depending on what comes in. So that really helps us to make sure that every age child gets an equal mm -hmm. gift. Oh, here, yeah. you know, so are financial holidays. donations more helpful that way that, that you can sort of um, narrate? Yeah, that, I mean, it's great. It, it, it really depends. Folks can do either. Both mm -hmm. are very much appreciated and, and welcomed. But I think sometimes um, people don't always realize that we do end up actually having to shop as yeah. well yeah. Um, for kids. And, and we are serving uh, children up to age 16 this year. So awesome. the age the age went up. It used to be up to 14. Now we're going up to 16 because those youth need help too. Oh, yeah, perfect. right, exactly. Awesome, well, Jen Schmaro, mm -hmm. Peggy Hegarty Steck <laughs> from Action Inc. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're yeah. gonna be seeing a lot more of you in the future. I know, I wanna do now. a show on housing. Oh, so, great, yeah, yeah we'd should, love to. Uh, well, we've already uh, warned Corey we're gonna go up into the window like the Today Show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, when you guys broadcast. Yeah, I'll so. be borrowing milk and sugar from that's you guys right, all the That's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for okay, joining yeah, us. People wanna learn more about Action Inc, actioninc.org. There you have it. Thanks so much, Okay, thank you. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. We're under the gun, Heather. I know. They're yeah. telling us we got to move along. I know. So we have Justine Laurie next, yet. Yeah? Yes. So Justine Laurie is part of the Sunrise Fund, uh, and they help raise money for uh, 
for scholarship. So those in recovery, how are you, Justine? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for being here. I am happy to be here. This is awesome. So uh, yeah, for those who don't know, a quick, a quick explanation of the Sunrise Fund. Sure. So um, it started about this time last year. Um, our founders are Jackie Latham yes. and Christian Mackey. Uh, it was started in memory of Jackie's sister, Jill, who lost her fight with addiction last August. Mm -hmm. um, kind of started pretty quickly. And How old was Jill? Jill was mid thirties, thirty five or thirty six. Yeah. Mm, grew up in Gloucester. Yep, grew up in yeah. Gloucester. They grew up right down the street from them, actually. Oh yeah, a little close to the family yep. still. Mm. Um, so uh, Christian was a good friend of Jill. Had tried to help her through her recovery, and is also a good friend of Jackie. So they yeah. started it. Um, the, our first event as a fundraiser was last fall the Cape Man Women's Softball League, which yes. Jill was a part of. Yep. Had a great softball tournament and donated funds uh, to us. And then they just had their second annual one in October. Right. Yeah. So in just a year's time, you've already made great strides and raised a ton of money. Yep. Uh, I believe you said thirty-seven thousand for most recent funds. Uh, so thirty-seven thousand was our net on our big golf tournament that yeah. we had in May, which was awesome. We had a real outpouring of support from the community with sponsors. Everyone wanted to play. Uh, donations for our raffle was great and it was awesome. Now what specifically is this money going towards? So it's going uh, straight to um, mainly sober living, but everyone has kind of looked at it on a case-by-case -case basis to see what they need. Because it's expensive, right? It is so expensive. Yeah. We've funded seven people so far since May, and that's been a total of over $25,000. Wow. Um, so it doesn't go that far. But imagine if you weren't there and the, this, this person is on, on that the cusp exactly you know exactly. at such a critical point in their lives mm -hmm. and they can't afford it exactly They're choosing to go into recovery so exactly. this is really an amazing program it is and we just had our first graduate we're so excited a Gloucester girl um, we funded sober living for her and they just called us and said she's doing awesome uh, she has a job she's okay. thriving and she doesn't need your financial help anymore um, that's wonderful and it's, it feels so great to be able you know I think all after of us. After one year. Um, so she did. Um, no, but your program. Oh, Sunrise yes, yes, has been yes. In, after one year. In place for a year. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and I think almost all of us at this point can say we have someone in our life that has struggled Absolutely. with addiction. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's nothing better than hearing this kind of news that people are having success with it. Yeah. And right? I think the amazing thing is growing up around here is how easily somebody can sort of fall prey to addiction or maybe have a predilection towards like you never know but yeah. it's just it's always so close everyone knows yeah. and, 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 and multiple people though. yeah it's it everywhere. knows no bounds it can affect mm -hmm. anybody and, and sometimes the people you would least expect you know yeah so, yeah, yeah no. so now what would the uh, uh, does summer sun had going on now through the holidays or looking for like what so our next big event that we have is on january 24th at giggles Oh Is yeah, really? laughing, yep, laughing for a cause. Stopping grounds for me, yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're doing that, and then we'll really start planning for the golf tournament again, probably early, maybe February. Yeah, that's that's a big one. It's just a lot of work, um, but it, it's great. Yeah. Um, and then we don't want to overwhelm people either with all of our events, so we're trying to space them out a little bit. And um, do you know of any other programs like this in other communities in yeah. Massachusetts? Or so funny. Um, Jackie and I just met with um, Kim Keen from the Pelican Fund mm -hmm. yesterday, and she is out of Newburyport and does. Um, they kind of fall under the Essex Community Foundation. Oh, okay. And uh, they service Newburyport. Salisbury, I think, all those Newberry, those surrounding mm -hmm. areas up there. Um, so the same thing, recovery scholarships. Yes, basically. recovery scholarships, yeah. generally twelve-step programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask you, Justine? It's how can if people want to learn more about this to get involved themselves um, and be a supporter, how can they do that? Sure. So we have a Facebook page which is pretty active. You yeah. see a post from us almost every day or every other day. Um, there's ways to donate right through our Facebook page or through our website. Um, and obviously, you know, anyone could reach out to any of us and we'd be happy to, to take the help. I think that's right. one reason why Sunrise Sun became so successful in just one year. It's, I don't know if it's the age group or how active everyone is, like in the community, mm -hmm. um, but it, it took off, which yeah. is great to see. And there's all sorts of bustle and action going on with a sunrise fund. Yeah. So it didn't take long, which is yeah. amazing. Well, Jill was well loved. And, um, you know, all her friends and family have been huge 
right. and helping out. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Well, there's so many people who are so well loved who have suffered so much. It's such a painful thing. So thank you for starting. Yeah, thank you, Justine. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your time today. If, you. if people want to learn more, you get the Sunrise Fund. I yeah. think it's a .org, right? Yeah, right. The Sunrisefund.org, yeah, or sunrise um, fund. You, know, you can just find us on Facebook at the Sunrise Fund. Yeah, we also want to give out a shout out to the Mackey family too. Oh yeah. This yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So Destinos has their first baby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna have they, to go in and see. They the have to have a mini sub named after them. Yeah, right. right. Yep, exactly. yep, the Jude. <laughs> really? Oh, really? That doesn't take Is the baby's name Jude? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh cool. Beautiful. All right, yeah. thank you, Justine. Thank we appreciate you so much. it. By the way, Justine, you are an accountant here in town. I am. I know you're overwhelmed, but I had to give you a little shout out here. Oh, okay. Too. Yeah, I am a yeah. CPA. I have yeah. my own practice. <laughs> Good um, to know. Yep, and yeah. I'm the treasurer of this and also newly of the Gloucester Education Foundation. So I'm oh, a little that's bit right. overwhelmed. So those organizations right are both, they're both in good hands. I'm going to shout out their nice new video. The Isn't Gloucester. it great? Oh, it's oh. Right? 1623 Studios. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Justine Laurie from the Sunrise Fund. Thank you right. so much. Thank Have you. a great Thanksgiving, too. Thanks, you too. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right. All right, Heather. Okay, we're Corey, almost there. We are, but we have the, the next guest is so much fun because we're back to food. Oh, we have two guests. We're being told. Oh, let's go. Yes. Bring them on. Yeah. We're ready yeah. for you. Come on. Oh, Julie's back too. Oh, surprise! <laughs> the natural hat trick. Julie's here for her third time. How are you doing? Good. Hi, right, Corey. Nice to meet you, you, Corey. So nice to see you again. It's been yes. a while. It's been a while, yes. Yeah, yeah. So Matt Beach, the former chef of Beach Gourmet, right? Do you want That's to introduce right. yourself and your um, the company that you ran so well for so long? So we were 11 years in business for the... Uh, sorry, you hold that. Uh, 11 years in business uh, catering locally, Cape Ann uh, mostly. And uh, we had a fantastic time. Uh, it's just one of those things we eventually decided that we didn't have to own a catering company to enjoy food and wine. So. We eventually moved on from that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we invited you here for two reasons. Yeah. One, because we want to, you to provide a Thanksgiving pro tip. Some something we we can't finish this Thanksgiving show without having some sort of, of tip on what to do Thanksgiving. But you are also a volunteer here at the Open Door, right? Yes, this is a great organization. As we know, we love supporting the Open Door. Um, myself, our family, as well as the Bistro Duckworth Bistro family, cook uh, Christmas Eve dinner. For and 10 years now, yeah, I believe. Yes, yep. Long time. It's like a family tradition now. That's really nice. It's awesome. And we really enjoy doing it. We have a great time. The kids come. And uh, it's fantastic. It's a pot roast, mashed potatoes, roasted mm. carrots. Best meal in Gloucester yeah. that evening. It's yes. the one time of year I actually make biscuits from scratch. And I, every time I make them, I think, I need to make these more often. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Uh, I have a great, a funny biscuit story I'll save for you, though. Okay. <laughs> Um, so you serve it on Christmas Eve. We yep. do. Yeah, yes. that's that's really yeah. lovely. It's really awesome. It's it's good to give back, of course, and we really enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. And what does that feel to be a volunteer here at the Open Door for ten years? Do, what does it feel like? Do, do you does it feel like this? Um, just I don't know. Just describe it a little bit more for us. So people, we want to encourage people to be a volunteer here. Well, it's easy, and it's it's one of those things that uh, gives really it gives back. It's, it's not just writing a check. It's, it's giving your time and seeing the impact that it makes on people directly because we see the, the folks that come and partake. And uh, one of the reasons I've always loved cooking is it's one of the few things that we do as humans that bring us together. And that's why I love to cook for the Open Door because it means so much to these people. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we love having you. Thank you. Yeah. So we want to thank your partner, John, and the Duckworth family, too, yeah. for that. Right. And Melissa Cox. Oh, and Melissa her husband, yes. Cox, as well. Yeah, that's, right, oh, that's great. Yep. All right. So what do you want to tell us about Thanksgiving? Secrets and tips. All right. So um, the key thing about any big meal planning is make a plan and execute the plan. So you could do your shopping today. You can make things ahead, cranberry sauce, even the gravy, if you get stressed out about gravy. Gravy stresses me out. Stuffing. <laughs> There's many things that can be done a couple of days in advance. Then you wake up and you throw the turkey in the oven and and it's uh, not so bad. But I make a plan. I know when I'm going to sit to the table and then I back it up to know when the turkey's going in the oven. And then you got this buffer time of the turkey roasting where you can do other things. So you do your gravy in advance? I. Mad. I do my gravy in advance. <laughs> um, 
I, I'll make it this weekend um, because I'll, I'll go and buy some turkey parts. Oh, okay, and stuff. so you'll use those drippings. I'll make uh, this, I gotta make, you have to make the stock. It makes a big difference because then you can use the stock in the dressing and other things as well. Right. So right. it doesn't go, it's not. Planning un, ahead. Planning yes. ahead is very key. Just make a plan and execute it. Involve the family, get them to chop up the celery carrots and, and celery and, and yeah. peel the potatoes. Mm -hmm. The potatoes can be peeled a couple of days in advance and put in the fridge. In water. Room, in water. Yeah, right. So, so what is your favorite stuffing? <sighs> It's hard, I, right? uh, well, stuffing or dressing. I love to stuff the bird because I think it makes a huge difference if you stuff the bird. Not everyone does that. It's but, hard to cook the bird, right? That's well, it takes a little longer to cook the bird, right. and it's a little more complicated at the end because you got to get it all out. But um, that's why I like to make stock because if you use turkey stock in the dressing, it's just as good. But uh, my favorite stuffing is, is grandma's stuffing. It's it's uh, brioche toasted with a lot of butter, of course. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> Copious yeah. amounts of butter mm -hmm. and uh, celery, onion, all the <laughs> aromatics. And uh, I like to put in a chopped apple roasted. And it's like a little bit of sweet to go with that savory. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's really good. Well, thank you. I think that helps me a lot <laughs> because now I think I need to make turkey stock this weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it does help with the gravy situation. Yeah, to have that homemade stock yeah, all set absolutely. to go, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been such a beautiful show. I know. Right? Yeah, we're about ready to wrap things up, but we want to just have Julie come pop back on quickly to sort of uh, mention once again all the things Open Door are doing right now yeah. and how people can help out right now. Okay, so um, people can help right now by getting involved, by learning more, going to foodpantry.org. Uh, that will list all the food drive sites that we have already talked about. Um, just know that the community has come together to provide um, more than 1,200 Thanksgiving meal baskets, not meals, but meal baskets mm -hmm. out to families and households, and, and we, we couldn't do that without them. And um, in the spirit of community and Thanksgiving, from our place to yours, you know, happy Thanksgiving to both of you oh, and you. this great community. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, you. Julie. Matt, you as thank well. You yes. Have a great holiday. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your efforts. Thanks for all you do for Cape Inn and beyond. We truly yeah. appreciate it. We can't wait to come back and learn more about The Open Door and see what you're up to for 2020. You know, I just want to say one thing yeah. about all these organizations that we talked to today that are giving i think it's so everyone needs a little bit of help whether it's you know to pay a fuel bill you know for a few months whether to have an extra meal to get them through the week with their Pick families a friend up. sometimes yeah, it's some, just yeah. a little bit of help that makes everything else come to place and it's you know it's a stressful world we live in and what you what you this organization and the other organizations we talk to are providing is really special. It provides that safety net, I think, yes. you know, together. And together we're all stronger and better for it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, every day is a gift, right? Yeah. And uh, this has been great to spend yeah. this day with you and learn more about everything going on here. And for those of you on the community, thanks for tuning in. You can always um, learn more about Now We're Here by following our calendar on 1623 Studios. We're going to be actually at Cape Ann Amulade on Tuesday, December 3rd as part of Giving Tuesday. Little puppies, little kittens. Yeah, so there's, there's Thanksgiving, there's Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, and then Giving Tuesday. So we'll be there with that's puppies and kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a big one. So, uh, but so short thanks. and sweet will emerge again. Yeah, yeah. we'll figure this yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. we don't know what's yeah. going on. So Heather, you were awesome. This oh, was thank great. You. Yeah. This was hard for me. But, I know. Yeah, but we did have some food questions. That we did, helpful. yeah. So yeah. Matt Beach, yeah. thank you so much. Julie yeah. Lafontaine, thank, thank you. you once again. Thank Heather, you. cheers to you. Have a great holiday, everybody. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Now We're Here, Tuesday, December 3rd, from Cape Inlet, Four Paws Lane, over in West Gloucester. Bye for now.